CataractCoach.com, pigment dispersion syndrome. How is cataract surgery different in these cases? This is a patient with some optic nerve changes, a crooked brook spindle. There you can see in the center, we see the, op the slight opacities on the cornea. That's the K spindle or crooked brook spindle. And that's basically the pigment that's been dispersed in the aqueous. And because of the patterns of flow, it gets deposited there, right there in the center of the cornea. Now, in most cases, it's of no visual consequence. So we'll do the cataract surgery as normal. You can see we filled the out viscoelastic. We're going to make our main incision here with a diamond, making a nice, clean incision right there on the steep axis in the diamond keratome. And we appropriately make the tunnel length just like that. Looks great. Now, in these cases, pigment dispersion syndrome is a loss of some of the iris pigment that goes throughout the anterior segment of the eye, and it can actually block off part of the trabecular mesh where it can decrease the outflow of the eye. And so in some patients, pigment dispersion syndrome can be associated with a glaucomatous situation. So these patients should be watched carefully. Now, remember, we're taking out a thick human lens of more than four millimeters in thickness from front to back, anterior to posterior. And we're going to replace it with a man-made lens that's very thin. The man-made lens is only about one millimeter or even less in thickness. So as a result, any of the scraping or rubbing of the posterior surface of the iris, which is what's been postulated to be the issue in pigment dispersion syndrome, that's going to be resolved. That's not going to be an issue anymore. But this patient still needs to have a follow-up for glaucomatous changes. Now, we're going to run all this fluid through the eye. When we do FACO here, remember, we're washing out that anterior chamber many, many times. Dozens of times at a minimum, and sometimes even a hundred or more times. And by doing this, we're washing out a lot of the pigment that's been dispersed, but we're not 100% removing it. So in this patient, we're going to do his cataract surgery here. You'll see there's a nucleus already gone. We're going to clean up. We're going to aspirate, put the eye pro right towards the angle of the eye and help aspirate out any particulate matter or pigment that's, that's been dispersed in that area. But still, we want the patient to have a follow-up with a glaucoma specialist. And they should follow up basically for the rest of his or her life. So cleaning up the caps are back here, the nucleus is already out, cortex is out, this looks pretty clean, nice looking rexus, and we'll get that eye on the caps are back. Now important, in patient with pigment dispersion syndrome, please, let's get the eye oil in the capsular bag. You don't want to put a sulcus lens in these patients, they're going to have even more pigment dispersion. So luckily here, we're putting in a beautiful lens right in the capsular bag, and we're going to eliminate any issues with pigment dispersion. So there's a lens, nice overlap of that capsular axis. In fact, textbook looks beautiful. Let's go inside the eye, remove some viscoelastic we'll go behind the lens. And then here's where we're going to spend some extra time just cleaning out the anterior segment, and we're going to place our probe close to the angle of the eye to help vacuum out any issues there, any of the pigment that may be dispersed in that area. Now remember, look at the flow here. We've got a flow of 60 cc's per minute. That's a lot of flow to really clean out and power wash that area. And we're applying a high degree of vacuum as well, four, five, six hundred millimeters of mercury of vacuum. It's a lot of vacuum. So cleaning up here again, polishing up that capsule, but certainly washing out the angle as well. Now, of course, just doing cataract surgery alone in every eye will lower the eye pressure, typically around 25%. So just doing the straight cataract surgery in this eye has a couple benefits. One, it lowers the eye pressure naturally. Two, of course, it fixes the cataract. And here we're also correcting the, the refractive error, so making the vision a whole lot better so the patient subjectively will see much better than before. But also, we're going to help vacuum out some of that um, pigment that may be the angle. And here we're zooming in on that crook and a brick spindle. Look at that cornea right there. There's that pigment. Look at that beautiful textbook picture of the pigment dispersion. But also remember, we're replacing that thick human lens that was four plus millimeters thick with a very thin lens. That in this case, less than one millimeter thin. And by doing that, we're actually giving less 
issues for the pigment dispersion. We're bringing the tissues away, the iris tissues further away from the zion support, the capsule, the eye well, etc. So hopefully that'll slow down the pigment dispersion in this eye. And you can see here at the end, we'll put a little triamcinolone in the eye. And I'm also going to put some moxifloxacin. That's a preservative-free antibiotic. And that looks pretty, pretty good. It looks great, in fact. I'm happy to tell you the patient did beautifully. That Crookenbrook spindle that you saw, the, the pigment dispersion that settled there on the central cornea, endothelium, that has no visual effect. Here at the end of the case, we're doing a matching paired limbal relaxing incision that's going opposite the main incision, again, to treat the pre existing astigmatism. The patient had a beautiful outcome, I'm happy to say, and we'll just follow up routinely once a year with a local glaucoma specialist. And here we can see the post-op picture of the Krukenberg spindle. It's there in the central corneal endothelium, and it's that pigment that originated from the iris, and it deposits in this pattern due to the fluidic motion of the, the aqueous in the anterior chamber of the eye. Thanks for watching.